When it comes to new translations, not too many manuscripts receive the same attention as the two that have formed the basis for modern textual criticism. In this segment, we will be continuing our examination of the proclaimed oldest and best manuscripts, continuing with this other half of the foundation of modern biblical textual analysis, Codex Aleph, otherwise known as Codex Sinaiticus. Codex Sinaiticus was discovered at the Greek Orthodox St. Catherine's Monastery by Constantine Van Tischendorf. He wrote of this experience in 1844 when finding the manuscript, stating, I perceived in the middle of the Great Hall a large and wide basket full of old parchments, and the librarian, who was a man of information, told me that two heaps of papers like these moldered by time, had been already committed to the flames. This could not seem to be an accurate depiction, as Tischendorf had came back in 1853 and again in 1859 to acquire additional sheets, repeatedly taking back with him segments of this codex, with cuts in the binding being evident. After obtaining the manuscript from the monastery under false pretenses for Tsar Alexander II, he finally published the Sinaiticus text in 1862. It should also be noted that the purported location, Sinai, is only labeled as such because of the mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine, and the actual location seems to point to Sinai being in Saudi Arabia. Which begs the question, is the mountain the only fake, or is the manuscript as well? Let's keep going to find out. Sinaiticus includes much of the New Testament. However, the Old Testament did not contain many of its books. While it possesses non-inspired books of the Apocrypha like Tobit, Judith, 1st and 4th Maccabees, Wisdom of Solomon, and Wisdom of Sirach, it also included in its New Testament the Epistle of Barnabas and the Shepherd of Hermas. Like Vaticanus, Sinaiticus is known as an Alexandrian text type, as it demonstrates various qualities that seem to be of the region's influence, particularly textual exclusions. Codex Sinaiticus is among the two most critical additions to the new translations, the other being Vaticanus. The work done by Westcott and Horton in 1881 with these manuscripts has been the foundation for other texts such as the Nessel Aland text, currently in its 28th edition. This is due to the shifting sands of archaeological digs in a place where the corruption of philosophers, pagans, and Gnostics was overwhelming, and still doesn't meet with many more equally authoritative dated manuscripts, not to mention consistent data that supports the authorized version. If the manuscript Tischendorf describes from 1844 which consisted of leather pages, a non-flammable material that would have been unfamiliar to Christian copiers, was to be burned, like he said, how did he know they would be there when he returned? Another factor to consider is that of Constantine Simonides, who professed that large sections of Sinaiticus were forgeries. As you can see in the display of the pages of Codex LF, the pages are inconsistent in texture and shade with the others, which can be expanded on in future installments. Remember, the King James Bible is not based on the minuscule evidence of the new versions. When you hear Christian scholars claim, we have 5,000 manuscripts, and yet rely on the infinitesimal data of modern natural textual criticism, call them out for being a hypocrite just like Jesus did, 
as you can learn and know about him with confidence from the authorized King James Version. Proverbs 30 verses 5 to 6 Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar.